Good morning, Zion, Zion Tishrei. And of course, we're going to be doing Zion and Ches today, so we have a lot to do. Hayom Yom for Zion. We're in uh, Rav's Zushi Me'anapoli's acronym for internalizing Shuva. each letter, right? So he's on the letter Be'ez, the Shuva, next to the last letter. And he uses a Pasuk, be, beginning with Be'ez, Bechol Derechech De'ehu. In all your ways, and derech, by the way, can be translated as path. Path, a derech is a path. In all your paths, wherever you walk, in all your pathways, you should know him. So the Frida Karebbe explains, a person who sets his heart and mind to observe all that happens to him around him and around him will perceive godliness tangibly in evidence, as the Mittler Rebbe pointed out, men of affairs, he means businessmen, people who are, it doesn't mean men, or I mean, or you have to be involved in a corporation, people who are out there in the world, involved in worldly things, as opposed to Talmud Chachomim, who are sitting in the base of Midrash and learning most of the time. The people who are out in the world, they have an advantage over the Talmud Chachomim, the secluded scholars, in that the former, that's the people out there, us, can witness actual manifestations of godliness. This form of the service of Shuva comes from one's perceiving hashgacha pratis, that everything is ha happening in a very specific way. And just uh, aside, but I think one of the, at least for me, one of the most important sephorim that I've delved into that really helps to train one in seeing Hashkacha Protus is the Shar HaBetochen uh, part of Choyves HaLabobah. It's the part of the, the, uh, uh, the that part which deals with Betochen, which they, which has been published and, and pushed a lot. There's a beautiful English translation of Shar HaBetochen, how to cultivate trust in God by seeing Hashkacha Protus and everything. Okay. Back to our Tanya. Uh, today we're still, we're going to be doing seven and eight, starting on page three seventy two. So back to the intricacies of before creation, uh, revelation that leads to creation and actual creation, all for the purpose of giving us an awareness of how the. The beginning is wedged in the end, meaning that the infinite himself, the essence of God himself, is invested in this down here below, which should and hopefully will give us a great sense of yira, meaning of respect and awe for the physical, the body, everything material, because that is what the Torah is all about, telling us how to deal with the body and the physical in the ways that reveal the essence of godliness. Okay. Um, the last thing that we spoke about was the angels of Atsilas. The angels of Atsilas, right? So I'm going to just preface with a, um, a an analogy that's given by the Rabbi Rashav in Sefer, in Hemshech Ayin Days. An analogy that helped me, and hopefully it will help you. To, and it's very simple. It's about geometry. Euclid, Lahavdo, he put forth a geometry that defined a point, a line, and a plane. A plane is in something with area. And the Arabi Shab uses this as a muscle to understand and shed some light on what we're talking about. So the first step in everything is not a step at all. It's the pre-existence before anything else of God himself, which the uh, Rambam speaks of as Kadman, the primordial, She'en Kadman, Kodem Lemen, a primary 
that has no primary before it. That's the allness, right, of Hashem. First step, number one, leading to this Olam Hazeh Hagashmi, right, is called the Tzimtzum Harisho, the first Tzimtzum. And what happened there, in the language of the Arizal, the two things happened. The allness, and, and we're using here the metaphor of light, right? There was nothing but the light, but not an emanated light, just a primal, primordial state of light. Nothing emanated yet, just, just that was it. To get emanation, meaning that there's a source and there's going to be a, something emanated from it, the first step was the symptom of Rishon, which the Rizal says is twofold. One, God was Siluk. He removed himself, so to speak. He created a hollow, an empty space, if you could say such a thing. Because, of course, he didn't leave. There's no place to leave to, right? He is the place of the world. That's what we call sometimes in Hamakam. He's called the place because he is the place of the world. But try to feel, feel this allegorically. He removed himself, right? And that's number one. And number two, he diminished himself. And that is represented in the Rabbi Roshan Moshal as a point. Euclid defines, if you will look in the, uh, you know, the, the writings of, of Euclid about his geometry, he defines a point of something that has zero dimension. Zero dimension. Even though a point in our reality is a mark, any mark you make on a piece of paper, no matter how fine the instrument down to uh, nano millimeter, you know, millimeters and nanometers, it still has some dimension. But so this is a theoretical thing. A point is a theoretical thing in Euclid's geometry. It's defined as something that has no dimension. And that the Rabbi Shav uses as a metaphor for the, the Simpson Harisha. Hashem has removed himself and diminished himself. Now from that point, there generates a line, right? A line, Euclid defines, as length without breadth, length with no width. Another physical impossibility, because if you take any instrument and draw a line, there will be some width, no matter how small, to that line. So the point and the line in Euclid's geometry are non-existent, which corresponds nicely to our Kabbalistic interpretation. God reduced himself to a no thing, right? To a point. And then he emanates this beam of light called a kav. And then the kav expands. This is the beam, a straight line of no dimension. And then the kav expands. Finally, if you take this... Uh, do I have a... Uh, here. Pretend this is a line with no dimension. It's a line, but it has a lot of dimension. In fact, the more I expand the dimension, the more I get the next stage, which is called a plane, or in Hebrew, it's called a shetach. So we have three dimensions here. After the simsum, coming from the simsum. Simsum, total removal and diminishment. And then comes point, line, and plane. So the point is where Hashem begins the process. And he generates from there a kav. Okay, and that's the introduction. And that we're going to speak about that stage, the generation of the kav, uh, the beam, and how things uh, evolve or, or move from there on and downward. Okay, so we left off, as I said, I hope that helps. And hopefully it will be helpful as we go further. We we're talking about the souls of angels. Uh, and we we're talking about the, the, the bodies of angels in a silas. And the bodies of angels, for there to be a sense of bodiness, meaning of separateness, there has to be some diminishment in the light. Yeah, And that sense of diminishment in the light means that the angels, the bodies of the angels in the silas are not totally bittal. They're not totally absorbed in the light. There's some sense of themselves, a very little bit, very rarefied, as we'll see, different from Bria, where it's very, very thick in Bria. 
But in Atsilas, there is some sense of that, because after all, there are beings in Atsilas, and for anything to come into, quote, being, it's a function of diminishment of the all-encompassing life. So that's the bodies of the angels in Atsilas, and now today's Tanya, and tomorrow's. But the souls of these angels, which come out into being from the intimacy of kissing. Now this, we're going to go with this a long, a long way. Is this, the, in, the intimacy, the joining of two opposites, male and female together. But the soul quality, which is a breathing, a breath, right? It's neshama, right? Which means neshima, to mean breath comes from the intimacy of kissing, which is, of course, a metaphor. But that's mouth-to-mouth, breath-to-breath. Breath itself being a metaphor here. So the souls of the angels, which come out from the intimate relationship of kissing, the souls of human beings, which is the intimacy of relationships, the male and female, the vatsilis, before they go down to the lower worlds, even though they are things, right? But they're very rarefied things, the souls of the angels of Atsilas and the souls of humans, us, particularly Odin, the Jew, which come from, called the a part of God himself. Very rarefied, Right? Uh, they're, so they're not really something totally separated yet, but they have some sense of an existence, an existence meaning that they are something and God is something else. But this re- relationship is so intimate that there's no real barrier or or, or separation between them. That's the state in Atsilas. That's the state of the neshamas of the angels of Atsilas and the state of our souls, neshama. God, yeah. But these souls, including our souls, are something like the level of godliness itself. But godliness in a state, but simsum otsum, in a state of very, very big simsum, right? Because as I said, before this occurred, before there's any revelation whatsoever, there's the contraction to a point, a place of no definition. I mean, you have no definition, no, no, def- no defined area, no defined existence. So this is a function of the Simsum Haricha, a very strong Simsum, in which God, again, to, just to recapitulate, moved himself to the side and diminished himself, that is, his awareness of himself. So this is a great big Simsum. And it's like the vessels of the ten spirits of of Atsilas themselves, where the Zohar told us at the beginning of this letter, he quotes it, that the Kalim of Atsilas are one with God himself. And so our souls, we'll focus on us, forget about the angels for a minute, or forever, our souls are an entity, but the language that's used in in Fasidus is that we are a yesh, but a yesh ha-netzel, we're an emanated something, we're not yet the difference between Atsilas, which is emanation, and Bria, which is creation. We're not that grub, so to speak, yet. We are very, very refined. We're part of the emanation that comes from that first Simpson. Shehen Bechidas Gavul. So there's some sense of limitation. Adideit Simpson Ha'or Ein Sof. Through the contraction of the Or Ein Sof. Hu Hakav. Now, this contraction of the or, we said there's two things in the Tzimtzum. There's a departure and there's a mute. There's a, 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 a diminishing. And from that diminished, back to the Rabbi Rishad's muscle, Nakuda point, the point now moves forward into a straight line, which is called the kav, the beam. This is the beginning of what's called in other places in Christ. It is Gilui HaHelam, the revelation of that which concealed. He was totally concealed into a point, point having no dimension, but that point now begins to beam out, and now there's a line. There's a line. So this is called Gili HaHelem, a revelation from something that was concealed. Kav, 
the beam. And the beam is Hamalubish Beraran Shilahem. He comes enclosed in the Nefesh Ruach and the Shoma of these angels, who come and yeah, and our souls, and Ukamait Simsum Harishan. And just like in the Simsum Harishan, Lies Cholo. The first thing he did is created an empty space, and then he diminished the light, and from the light comes the beam. And even after the Nefesh Ruach and the Shoma of Atsilis comes down into this world, right? Because through further contractions, this, this beam of infinite Ein Sof light is going to come down into this world. To the original, the older, the original Tzadikim in the world. It's possible that it didn't change its mahus. Mahus is mahus, mahus is made up of two words. Mahu, what it is. It's still infinite light. It's still light that's connected with God Himself. Liyez Dava Nifra. It didn't yet become something totally separated. Me'elakus from godliness itself. Malochen, and therefore, Hoyimistalkis, it's Sadikim Rishonim. It says about Sadikim Rishonim, the early Sadikim, if there came in front of them anything that would indicate that would be from the world of the clippers that they were able and and might have caused some distraction for them that to be attracted toward that but they would pass away before that distraction became a reality to them because it was so obvious that because their souls were so obviously connected with Elakus that this is not something to have anything to do with and then the soul would, as if it had been attracted to that even a little bit, it would leave their body before any kind of uh, connection to that negative could be established. The code of Lehmer Shigam Halafi Mirabavis Almin. And this, this idea of the Shom is going so rarefied that anything that, that distracts from that godliness is a, something that they can't live with. And therefore, that the goes back up. This is similar to the tens upon tens of thousands of worlds, the Yisba Begal Guta, the Arach Anpin, that live, that sit in, now here's a big metaphor, that live in the skull of Arach Anpin. The skull, okay. First of all, skull. What's the matter? Skull is this, right? They knock on my skull. But the skull is on top of my brain. The brain is where stuff starts to happen, Chochmah bin Adas, and on down, Seder Histalshulis. The skull is likened to like the crown. It's the Kesser, right? And it's the Kesser of Arach Anpin. Now, Arach Anpin, we've learned that there are two levels in, in the crown. There's Atik Yomim, the inner part of the crown, and Arach Anpin, the external part of the crown, which has a power to descend in a makiftik way into in a all encompassing transcendent way into the internality of the brain, starting with Hokma Bina Das. So this is the so this this sensation that these Sadiqim have of what's above, which is Ra El Akus, is like this is like the sensation or the reality. Of the fact that there is a that we exist in a structure of a crown which is makif, and but these the tzaddikim are connected to the, not we're all connected also. They have a sense of their connectivity to the crown. Okay, which is the the skull of Arakantin, the zer antin, and also it's the coming down from there into the midos. The midos, these are midos of Ein Sof. These are midos before Atzilus. So ain in an almin in an almin, which are not worlds mamish, ke en hecholis that silas. Excuse me. Mazer in an all almin mamish, these are worlds, but these are worlds of ain sof. Oilamis ain sof. You know, we may have come across the expression, worlds without end. But here he's talking worlds that are part and parcel of the ain sof before they really get uh, instantiated as something separate. And these are like the Hecholis 
the Atsilas, the chambers of Atsilas. Remember, we spoke about Atsilas, that in Atsilas, he and his lights are one, he and his vessels are one, there's no sense of separation. So these are like the chambers of Atsilas and Bechinus Yesh. There are something of a something, but it's an emanated something. It's a sense of something that's connected with the emanator. And so it's like the souls of angels, as we said earlier, who are born from the intimacy of kissing. And they're called worlds. In, they're called worlds in relation to the makifdika level above them, which is called the skull or the image. The image of something before it becomes reality. Like when we think of something in our brain, right? It's still it's in our brain. I mean, this is just a muscle because we're talking even at a higher level. Something where we it comes from our will. A will would be a better a way to say it's something that we want to do because will is connected with Kesser. And so my hand is stuck here on my skull above my head. And but it's not yet realized in any way, but yet it's beginning to take some kind of a shape. But these angels and souls of Atsilas are not mamish godliness, not mamish godliness, livra yeshma'ayan, to become a real creature, a yesha nivra, something that has real sense of separation. The sense of separation comes that the angels have separated from the vessels of the ten spheros. These are the ten spheros of Ensvot, the ten spheros as they are so-called in the skull of Hashem, before in the brain of Hashem, just like our skull before our brain. So in them is Malubesh Hakav. Now we come down to the beam. The beam is going to go out from this place of concealment, the Kesser, or the Orein Sof, that become, the, the Orein Sof from right before the Tzimtzum is going to be beamed out from that hidden dimension, a light, a Gilea Hela, which we call the Kav. The Orein Sof. This Kav comes from the infinite light. Sha'or hu ke'en ha'moyer. And light, in general, is something like the radiator. In other words, a beam of light from the sun has the qualities of the sun. The beam of light carries with it, like the sun has a quality that it's a, the light isn't just to make something illuminated, it's to give life, right? The beam, the sun is a life-giving source. Without the sun, we don't have anything organically living here in this world. So the sunlight is a carrier of life itself. So any beam of light that's coming from this, now back to our orange self, carries with it the life force. So that's what we mean, that the light is like something like the radiator. It's carrying life force with it. Humahusibes musoi shell, which the source of it, the source of the beam of the kav, is Hamaitzel Borahu, the emanator himself, which is like the sun. Which the emanator himself has no previous source. His existence is from himself. And he, the essence of God himself, does not evolve from, or it doesn't, it's not an effect from some previous cause. And therefore, it's in his ability, this Ein Sof, the Atmos of the Ein Sof, the essence of the Ein Sof, uh, has the ability to create, and the beam that carries with it that ability to create, which stems from him himself. Because he himself is the only thing that has the power to create something from nothing the Ephes, from absolutely nothing. Well, from nothing, absolutely, and Muchlat is even more absolutely. From absolutely nothing. Mamish. That's what the Ein Sof, the infinite one, the way we call God the infinite one, 
Uh, you know, I've said a few times in his Brahmin Hasidus that the real real compliment to God is not that he's ain't so, if that he's not without end, but the real compliment is that he has no beginning. And in that is the beginning of everything. So believe me, so God is is the is the source of life. Without any predecessor cause to this life force. Now, to take this Ein Sof, this infinite, and limit it, to give it Gavul Umida, boundedness and measure, so for that, the light of the infinite is enclosed in what's called the vessels of the ten spheres of Atsilis. And this light is united with the vessel completely. With a complete unity. Ad, as it says in the Zohar, the Ihu He and his Kalim are one. Livre Bohem. Because the Kalim, and then back to my little mashal about electricity, the electricity needs the wire in order to deliver what it's meant to be, which is a manifestation and a, a, a something that functions in a way that delivers something, which is light. So in Atsilis, the light, which is the energy, and the vessels, which are the containers, are one. And that gives us a combo, so to speak, which is able, livroi, to create with them. The al yodam and through them, pirurim baligavul, creatures which are really limited, the taklis and have the demarcation, and specifically when they get down to the level of Bria. Remember, as he said, in Atsilis, it's a yesh, it's a yesh, but it's a yesh, it's a something which is netso, emanated meaning it knows and feels its connection to the source. Bria begins the sense of feeling disconnected from the source, which we call yesh hanivra, the created, a created thing. Amna, however, midai zais, one should know. Sheikiris habis a yesh, the main coming into being of yesh, of something, the Dover Nifrod and something which is really feels itself to be separated, Lagamre, who memalchus the Atsilis. The operation that the uh, the machine for creating that is that sense of complete separation, which starts in Bria, is from Malchus of Atsilis. The bottom of Atsilis becomes the crown of the uh, and it, re- it goes all the way down. Malchus of Bria becomes the crown of Yatsira, etc. And the life force is invested in the crown. The crown is Malchus, just like the life force of a kingdom is the king and the queen, and particularly the queen. We're going to now really emphasize the feminine aspect here of Malchus for the next uh, for the next for the rest of this piece, actually. Malchus of Atsilas. Malchus of Atsilas, Shanasa Atik, it becomes the crown. Malchus of Atsilis, the lowest level, which gets everything from flow from above. The flow from above is likened to Zohar, the flow from above into Nekeva, into the into the female. So the gets so and that becomes the crown of Bria, the Kesar, the Makif of Bria. So the Ilava Alu cause of you know cause of descent one step by step down to Malchus of Atsilis creates Malchus, and Malchus now becomes the crown, like the crown, the coronated queen, who gives a transcendent power to the levels down here below, as he's going to explain. First of all, ki ein melech am. There's a, it's a pasuk. There's no king without a people. So for God's kingship, which is very deeply rooted in his essence, to be king, on the emloch it says, I will be king, for it to be materialized, actualized, there has to be a kingdom. And a kingdom is a bunch of separate people, right? There has to be the sense of separateness for God to uh, include, uh, for God to rule over, 
or infuse energy in. That's really what the rulership is about, to infuse life force into this separated stuff. There's no king without a people. The gam riboy hanebroim, and all the multiplicity of creators, creations, but his chalchuson, and their division, and their individuality, shenivras mekoyach ha'ensof, which comes from the power of the ensof, which is yochid umiyuchid, which is singular and united, betachlis, with him, it's through the various letters, which are the vessels, which come out from Malchus. As it says, Malchus is called Pi Hashem, the mouth of God. Malchus Pe, Malchus is called the mouth, right? It's an opening. It's like the womb opens and gives birth. So Malchus is called Pe Havaya, the mouth of Hashem. If everything is, you know, go back to the metaphor of the mouth. The mouth is speaking what has been gestating in one's thought inside oneself. And one's thought has been uh, brought into being from the power of, of, of intellect which exists in the brain. But the expression of it, the birthing of it, of the speech, is through the mouth. The mouth is, the, the mouth is called pi Hashem. And it's a, and related to a Pasuk in Tilim, the Pasuk in Tilim says, with, this, with the breath of his mouth, he created everything. The Hemot says a pe, and the five articulative uh, powers of the mouth, Hain come from the five Gavuras de Nukva. The five Gavuras are limitations, and Nukva is the feminine. So the mouth, which is the delivery mechanism, the opening, like the womb, has five ways of articulating the life force, which is analogous to the five articulated powers of the mouth, the tongue, the, the teeth, the throat, etc., etc. And therefore, Malchus begins what's called the Alma Disgalia, the revealed world. It's coming out of my mouth, and now it's available. Because in that is revealed the power of the light of the Ein Sof, to create something from nothing. Not by a cause and effect, but from yesh me'ayin. Avol, tes sviros harishonis, but the previous nine spheros, which feed into Malchus, netzlub histal shulis ilavol, they came down one from the other in a step-by-step way. Goring soif ha'molubish v'chok malavadoi. So here, uh, we, we're used to talking about the ten spheres of Atsilas coming down to Bria, but there's a state of spheros above, which are called Esospheros Aganuzois, the ten hidden spheres, or Esospheros Blima, which are, are, are called Malchus de Ainsof, Malchus of Ainsof, where the spheros are not yet really, you know, really, ten, they're not yet in a state of, of, of real existence, but they're a source for the real existence. So Malchus of Ainsof feeds into Chochma of Atsilas, and then there's a Seder Histalshalis to Malchus of, of, of Atsilas, and that becomes the crown to the worlds down below, step by step. Vezesha Kosev, and this is what Vezesha Omer, this is what's, writ, what's spoken about in Sefer Yitzhira, who says, that the beginning is wedged in the end. Now, to finish this, I'm going to have to speed up a bit. Kikeser uh, hu this crown, is an intermediary between Hamaitzel and Etzolim, between the emanator and the emanated. And this crown, this Malchus, has something of the lower levels of the Einsof itself. It's the Makiv, it's the crown. Malchus. And that's why it's called the crown of Malchus. Because there's no crown except to a king, or to a queen, to a regnant. And this is also called the downside, the last side of the infinite, of the, of the infinite one. He Malchus, the Ein Sof. And he labels it now. Malchus of Ein Sof. 
Malchus of Ainsof becomes the driver for Hochma of Atzilus, and then Malchus of Atzilus becomes the crown and driver for Hochma of Bia, and all the way down. But the point being of all of this, this is a you know very detailed anatomy, is that the infinite, the Ainsof itself, flows through all of this, all of this chain. The infinite is coming down through and through and through. Lochen got Malchus of Atzilus nikra keser, and therefore, even though Malchus of Atzilus is the bottom of Atzilus versus Malchus of the Ainsof, which is way up above, it's called keser from the perspective of below to above. If you're looking down here, if you're in, in the world of Bria, for instance, if you're Hakma of Bria, you're looking up from the bottom up to Malchus the Keser of Malchus of Atzilus. Umagam especially. The souls which are born from this, these souls, which are our souls, which ultimately become something separated, right? My souls in my body, your souls in your body. These they become separated souls, but Olamabriya, that separation first starts coming in Olamabriya. We're all from that singular source of souls, which is Malchus the Ainsov. But then through the process of of Yeshme Ayin, where we first, where Bria first occurs, and then Ilava Olo, they get very differentiated and become individual souls in the world of Bria. The Nikita Bashem Leda. And this process of the Seder of Spheros emerging from the crown of Malchus of above is called birth. I said Malchus is the receiver who gives birth, the feminine, the womb which gives birth or the mouth, which receives from the power of intellect, which gives birth to, to, to expression. So Malchus is called, and this, so this process is called metaphorically, Leda, birth. And it's like, like the splitting of the sea. The splitting of the sea here in the, in the metaphor of birth is analogous to the breaking of the waters, the feminine waters, the breaking of the waters during physical birth which is the, the splitting of the sea. And he said, and that and the Kabbalah tells us that that splitting of the sea, the red the sea, when we went out of Egypt, he says, the batika tolyu, depends on Atik, depends on the crown, which is Malchus. Malchus has the power to break waters and deliver. And all the growth of souls for the seven months from the intimate relationship between God or the Spheros above Malchus and Malchus, which occurs on Shmini Yatseris. This is the discussion on its own, Sukkot Shmini Yatseris, the eighth day, right? The eighth day, eight, seven is the order of creation, the Seder Histalflus, and eight is above that, it's the Kesar, right? Shmini Yatseris. And what is Shmini Yatseris? Where we, where the party is over, and we are brought to him in a very intimate relationship. That's Shmini Yatseris. So Shmini Yatseris is likened to the point of the, the moment of intimacy between us and God, which gives birth to Neshamas. And these Neshamas gestate for seven months. That's the minimal time period for a viable birth, according to the Torah, seven months of gestation. And when, are this, when is the seven months from Shmini Yatseris? It's Shvi Pesa. And what happens on Shvi Pesa? The waters break. So this is, a, I think, a hugely beautiful metaphor for the conception and the months of gestation and then the breaking of the waters. And when the waters break, all the individual stuff, the birth happens. And now the, that, that, that singular point of egg has become something uh, tangibly exists extant as an individual person. So this is like the growth of masculine and feminine, the union of the egg and the zygote, and the egg, and the egg, the sperm and the egg to create the zygote in the womb of the mother. But this is called the supernal mother, Malchus up above. Shehu ayyadei which comes through very, very big lights. Ma'ema Allah from the supernal mother, whom a mile and higher and higher and higher, ad ain sof without end, 
the slab should boy kol tes or zayin yarchay later, and that becomes enclosed in the seven or the nine or seven months to give birth. The kocha hu birbirius neshamas. Similarly, it is with the birth of souls, umalachim and angels, laolim habriya in the world of briya. And it also has to do with the root and the the, the, the root and the, and the beginning of the seminal drop, which is received and becomes thickened, so to speak, as it goes down and down and down into the spheros from in from that zeir anten, which are the midos, and it comes into the brain of the father and the mother. So this is the union of sperm and egg. Of a called zivug, and in every union, intimate union, nimshechus la avava ima. There's drawn down to hokma and bina. Hokma is the masculine, bina is the feminine. Me arachanten from the crown up above, from the orasoidet. Ve al yodai uma maila maila, and then from oh excuse me. From Arachantin and from Arachantin to Atik Yoimi, which is the top of the crown. And it's drawn down really from even higher and higher and higher from the Ein Sof itself, from above to below, Ad Ein Sof itself to the infinite one himself. That's where the power of birth and life comes from. Because he alone, remember this, he alone has the power to create. It's just that he dispenses that power to create and, and, and disperses it down and down the channel, through the kav, through the beam, and then into the constructs which we call atzilus, rhea, etc. But that power to create, that creative power which creates a human being, is vested in and only in the koyach of enso, the power of infinity. Shakol behelam u'bemoichin, and everything is, remains concealed in the brain, that's the sperm, yeah, Ad ledes anukva, until and, and the sperm in the egg, the beginning of where they come from, and it's all hidden in there. Ad ledes anukva, until there's the birth, which take place. It takes place in the feminine womb, and that's the birth of neshamas. Right, we're conflating here the the physical birth of a person to the uh, spiritual birth of creation up above. These are the neshamas and the malachim, the hecholas, and the chambers in the world of Bria. So nimsa comes out, shezeho gili orin sof mamish, that what's realized down here below in birth, and this is the miracle of birth, that what's realized down here below in birth is a revelation of the infinite light of the Ein Sof, alideha ibor verhaleder, through pregnancy and birth. And that's today in Shabbos. Whoa. A lot here, huh? I mean, it is late, but I'll take any, any questions or comments. Confusions? Clarifications? So, um, you know, again, yeah. I... I always go back to like these simple things. Good. So that's that's the only way my mind can take it. So, just you know, the whole time when when we were speaking, you know, you're always showing coming from above to below. It's starting from the top down, but really, that's just a reality for for us to be able to grasp the concept because it it seems like it has to be going on like right here, everywhere. There, there is. isn't a that that isn't taking place. Yes, it, it is, everywhere. Is, hmm? like, yeah, right. Is, it's, it's taking is, place is that, everywhere. It's just taking place everywhere. There's no like, a, like it's just above because that's how humans think. Yeah, about. oh, good, good. It's above because humans think about it. Yes, it's here. It's right here and now. <laughs> the shit that this here and now is a, very layered here and now, right? There's the physical of the here and now. There's the right. spiritual of the here and now. There's the elokus of here. There's the atzmus of here and now. And that's the shame havai, present, past, and future all at once. Right. 
Yeah, that's very good. Lamaila is just a metaphor for deeper. And I always translate it uh, when I'm teaching it, and I've had I've done this before with us, with us instead of above, deeper, deeper levels of consciousness, all here and then. Yeah. Good point. Rivka. Yeah, consistent with that, it's a sense of um, higher and lower, deeper or, or more apparent. It's it's the sense of what we don't see as opposed to what we do see. Exactly, um, exactly. Yep. And I, yes, it, there's too much in this uh, lesson today <laughs> to even yes. start talking about it. It really has to be broken down into like about 10 different topics, right. but... Um, you did a great job. It's really right, hard. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, this, you with both, huh? mm. that's, you know, and, and each time we'll do it, we, we'll catch something more, more about it. Yeah. You get the sense yeah. that the Alta Rebbe was just trying to give you as much as he could, you know, all at once. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's really this sense of pushing it out and then just, you know, wanting to, to give it. Uh, yep. In words, somehow, as much as possible. It's really yeah, um, exactly. very powerful. Beautiful. It's true. Yeah. Anybody else? So, what's the beginning of all this? What do we have for this? There's more than meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> to, I, hold I think, in, to, to hold infinity in the palm of your hand. I think the beginning is that. It's very it, it's very near to us, you know. With the excellent, yeah. It's right. not in it's the all, heaven. It's right. It's all one connection. It's all happening at the same time, and we we're just seeing such an infinitesimal part of reality. But yeah. don't get crazy. <laughs> keep your keep your cool. It's okay. Right. Right. Very good. Anybody else? Okay, then. Good Shabbos. See you Sunday. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shuva. I must tell you, I was at the Kotel last night. It was just amazing, 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 amazing. It was wall to wall, front to back, side to side. And Oof. people, people, I mean, people in Israel, this fire in particular, know this by, by, pet, by heart. Everybody is responding in unison. <clears throat> Uh, it, it's just just astounding. Anyways, it was it was really beautiful. So it, it's happening, guys. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank did you. you <laughs> did you capture any of it on film? I mean, I did. I did. Yeah, Maybe yeah. You'll send send us something if you think it's worthwhile. It's beautiful. Okay. Yeah, you get some. You get some sense. Yeah, please. All right. Okay. okay. Good job, Good job.